Aloha, this is Kenson Kuba again coming to you from the island of Maui. Again, we're in the uh, sixth lesson of the study book number one, the lesson on prayer. We looked at the different aspects of prayer. We've looked at the first three, adoration, praising God, uh, confession, thanksgiving, and today we're going to be looking at supplication, or during this, uh, this part we will be looking at supplication. And so let's begin with a word of prayer as we begin. Father, I thank you again for my friend for joining me this time to study your word and to learn more about how to pray and the importance of prayer. And so, Father, we pray that your spirit would fill us with, with his power and his wisdom and would illuminate our minds and show us what your truth is, that we might live in a manner that's worthy of our calling that we might please you, that we might be doing the things that you want us to do, your will. And so, Father, we ask this in Jesus' name, that you might be glorified. Amen. Amen. We looked at adoration, and again, adoration is one of the great aspects of prayer where we praise Him and acknowledge who He is and His, His power and His glory and His characteristics and His nature. And that, if you only have one thing to do, I would say, let's praise God. That's one of the great uh, activities. In fact, when we get to heaven and we're in God's presence, we will spend a lot of time in adoration. And it's going to be where the greatest time is to worship God and to acknowledge, acknowledge Him. And so if I, I hope you enjoy doing that now because you're going to be doing it a lot when, you, when we go to eternity. Then we looked at confession. Well, this is something that we won't be doing in eternity because the blood of Christ has forgiven us and when we step through that veil into eternity either by being taken to heaven through the rapture or by physical death that we will not be doing this because we will not be committing sin God's grace will keep us from that so but right now we we will have to be confessing because we do sin and so confession is a way to maintain our fellowship and intimacy with God and uh, so this, that's what was so important about confession now. So we need to be, be practicing that. And then the last lesson, or last part of it, we looked at Thanksgiving and how it is basically demonstrating our faith in God, the sovereign God, that He is in control and that He is using all things together for our good. So uh, giving thanks is an exercise and demonstration of our faith. Now we come to the final part of prayer. And this is the part that we normally equate with prayer. When you, when you tell people we were praying or I'm going to pray uh, or would you pray, you ask some people. This is what we normally are talking about. Uh, supplication is, is the bringing of our request to God. So let's, let's begin. In fact, that's what it starts off with. Supplication is the bringing of our request to God. Too often, we become worried and forget the one person who can help us. Isn't that interesting? When, when we have a need... We try to think it through and figure out how can we get through this, etc. Until we finally we realize we haven't gone to the one who really can help us, and that is God. And so supplication should be the first thing we think of doing when we, when we have a need. And we follow the acts. We start with adoration. We praise God. We confess. We thank God that He is in control. And then we bring our requests. It's always a good thing to do it in that in that um, step, in those steps. So let's read Philippians 4, 6 and let's see what it says about supplication. Paul says to the Philippians, Do not be anxious about anything, but, but in everything, by prayer and petitions, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's a great verse to memorize too. Now let's see, I want you to underline what Philippians 4, 6 teaches about being anxious. What does it teach us about being anxious? Underline that part of this verse. Well, it's right here, isn't it? It says, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. Okay? So that's what it... That's what I wanted you to underline. Don't be anxious. And then circle the word that describes what things we can ask God for. What things can we ask God for? 
Circle those words. That explains that. Did you circle in everything? Did you circle that? But in everything, okay, we can present our request to God in everything. And then underline the result of bringing our request to God. When we bring our request to God, what's the result of that? Underline that. Well, it says it right here. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is as opposed to being anxious about all things. Instead, we will have peace instead of anxiety because when we bring our request to God, He will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ because we know we've given it to Him and we're going to leave it with Him and He will deal and, and He will answer our problems. So that's what a supplication is about. Now, have you ever wondered why some of our prayer requests are not answered? The scriptures below explains why, at least some of the reasons. James 4.3 When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. That's one of the reasons. It says here, Underline why we sometimes don't receive what we ask for in James 4.3. Okay, you can see it very clearly, don't you? Okay. Why don't we receive it? Because we ask, we, have, we ask with wrong motives. God looks into our hearts, you know. That's one thing we can't tell about other people all the time. Uh, there's a lot of people that on their face, they, can, they seem sincere. But if we could look into their hearts, we can see, uh-uh. Their motives are wrong. They're very self-centered and, and, and self-absorbed. But God, you know, we, we can't fool Him. He looks right past our face, uh, right past our facades. He can look right into our hearts and He will answer us by looking into our hearts and see what are our motives. If our motives are right, it's for, if it's for His glory, if it's for the benefit of others, then He will answer us. But if not, hmm we will not receive what we ask from Him. Now circle what James means by wrong motives. What does he mean? Circle that part. It says, We ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You know, a lot of people will say, Lord, make me rich, or I want to win this lottery, and all these other things. Why? What are you going to do with that money? What are you going to do with these things you're asking God for? Is it to spend on your pleasures? Is it for your convenience? See, God knows all of that. Okay? And then let's look at the next verse, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This, is, this we looked at before. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. And again, this is another great verse to learn. It says, underline the condition for answered prayer in this verse, 1 John 5, 14 to 15. And we've gone through this many times before. And so what, what do we underline here? Well, that if we ask anything according to His will. Well, how do you know if, if it's His will? There you need to know the Scriptures. If you can show a Scripture or if you can claim a Scripture that says what God's will is, and then you pray for that thing, God will hear, hear us. Remember when we asked God to fill us with, with His Holy Spirit. It was that God's will? Of course, because He commands us to be filled. So when I pray, Lord, fill me with Your Spirit, will He? Yes. Why? Because He will hear that request because it's according to His will. If I can find anything that's His will in Scripture, and I pray for those things, He will hear me, and I can be confident that He will answer me. And now let's go to the next one, John 15, 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Wow, that's an incredible promise, isn't it? It says, underline the condition for answered prayers in John 15, 7. Let's see. Underline what? What are you going to underline? If you remain in me, or in some in King James it says, abide in me. That means you're walking with God, you're, you're intimate with God, and you're, you're, you're 
you know, you're confessing your sins and your, your heart is open to God's will and you're desiring to please God and to glorify Him with your life. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You, you're desiring to do all that God asks of you. If you remain in me, that's what that means, and my words remain in you. Not only that, but you know God's Word. You're in God's Word. Remember, we looked at Psalm 119, that uh, your word have I hidden in my heart that, that I may not sin against you. And so you've put the, His words in, our, in your heart, in my heart. And so we're walking with God and we're fellowshiping, fellowshiping with Him and His word is in us. Then I can ask whatever I wish. Why? Because what I want will be what God wants. Isn't that true? If I'm walking with God and I, and I, and His Word is in me, then my desire will be His desire. And it goes back to this one right here. I will be asking for things according to His will. Can you see that? And then He will give it to me. Why? Because He says He will answer me if I pray according to His will. Okay? And then the final one, Matthew 21, 22. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Underline the condition for answered prayer. What's the condition? Here, if you believe, if you believe, you will receive. Well, how can you know that God will answer your prayer? Is it just, a, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, it's not that. There has to be a foundation to our faith. It's not just a matter of just saying, I believe. There has to be a foundation. And what's that foundation? Well, it's because you're praying according to God's will not according to your own pleasures. Can you see how these verses are all related? When you know you're, co you're praying according to God's will, and how do you know that? Because you're walking with Him and you're remaining in God and His words remain in you. Well, when you're doing this, if, if you're allowing God to fill you and to remain in you, and you, you are in Him and His words are in you, then you're going to be praying according to His will, not according to your own selfish pleasures. And then you can know that He will hear you and He will answer you. And that will give you confidence, you see. And when you have that confidence, then you can really believe that He's going to answer you. If you believe, then you will receive. Okay? And so these verses are all linked together. And so I hope, uh, we hope we've been able to you know, see that. So, for whom should we pray? Well, let's go through this quickly. First of all, he says in 1 Timothy 2.1, I urge, I urge them, first of all, the requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. That's who we should pray for. For kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Pray for our leaders. Leaders of our local government, our provinces, our states, and our whole, whole country. Pray for them. They need God's guidance for their lives. And then, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Who should we pray for? Each other. Okay? That's, if someone is sick, if someone is in need, let's pray for each other. Again, let's, let's pray according to God's will. And, and then finally in Ephesians 6.18, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints for all the believers that's what Paul calls the believers saints those who are called apart called to be apart and so he says keep on praying for all the saints and so be sure to be praying for your Christian brothers and sisters because Satan is at work and always trying to bring us down so the final thing I'd like us to do is spend a few minutes praying. So I'm going to stop this lesson. We're going to just, I want you to just stop right now and spend time in praying. Adoring God, confessing your sins, thanking Him, and bringing your request to Him. Thank you. And God bless you.